been joined by our CEO, Dr. Solomon Letangule, who will also grace this occasion and give us the opening remarks. I must say that this is a very interesting program for us because we have just met the students and uh, you can acknowledge that they were very happy. They were very, very happy and uh, we are hoping that this spirit will continue. The such programs which is very beneficial to the institutions that are involved, both KOE and NITA. Now, because of interest of time, I want to request uh, uh, Madam Eda to pray for us, a short prayer, then we can get started. Good evening. Uh, let's bow our heads and pray. Almighty Lord, we come before you this evening with thanksgiving. We thank you for this day that you've given unto us. We thank you for the morning session that we've had. It was a successful session and we want to honor you and glorify your name. Even as we begin this last session, Father, you pray that you may be with us. And at the end of the day, Father, may we glorify your name. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Thank you so much, Madam Edda. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to welcome our CEO, Dr. Letangula, to say a word to the partners. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Makoha, uh, our partners, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the management and the staff of the Kenya Water Institute uh, to most warmly welcome you to the Kenya Water Institute. Karibuni sana. Our partners uh, led by the Danish Industries, the 3F, WASPA, and uh, NITA, uh, Koto, and all of you seated here. I want to again thank you for partnering with us, for working with us, and I want to also tell you that uh, we are very excited and happy to work with you. As Kenya Water Institute, we are going to work with you on this journey, and we shall ensure that uh, all that we need to do as an institution will be done. Uh, to ensure the success of our partnership and our various initiatives. With those few remarks, Karibuni Sana. Asante. Thank you. Tuneza Patia CEO Makofi Tena. Thank you so much for those kind words of wisdom. We are now very inspired to continue with the program. And at this juncture, I would wish to welcome 3F to give us a presentation. 3F, please. Uh, the director and other guests, all protocol observed. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to stand here and say a few things about 3F. My name is Daniel Maura. I'm the project coordinator in Kenya and the region. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to be here and even to hold this occasion. Um, the F, the United Federation of Workers in Denmark, I'll say a few things about the organization, is actually the largest 
and the strongest trade union federation with approximately 270,000 members, with a growing number being international members, approximately 15% of the new members are from the other countries. It's affiliated to the Danish Trade Union Confederation and <coughs> six global union federations that are linked to the sectors where 3F works. These sectors include manufacturing industries, construction, transport, public and private services, catering and hospitality, agriculture, horticulture, and forestry. Uh, we also have extension on initiatives at international level under the International Solidarity, where 3F has been working with development of unions in other countries for over 30 years. And this includes countries uh, like Latin America, Africa, Asia, Middle East, and Central and Eastern Europe. AF works to, of course, obtain international labor rights and set out, that are set out by international labor organization and also to obtain a just and well-regulated labor market with decent working and living conditions for all the workers in the world. The international programs are operated from the 3F head office in Denmark and through regional offices in South Asia, Latin America, and Africa. We, in the implementation of 3F projects, we work through a consortium that is called the Labor Market Consortium, and this comprises of 3F, the Danish Federation of Trade Unions, and the Danish Industries, that is the employer association. And the cooperation is based on the understanding that create lasting change for workers. There needs to be a positive cooperation between all parties. If we are to achieve and create a lasting change for workers, there is need for a positive cooperation between all parties, included in the labor market. And this pertains to employers, unions, and of course the government. Uh, let me mention a bit about the background of the project. And this project is actually an initiative that was spearheaded by the Minister of Development, who invited several professional individuals with specific knowledge on labor market to partake in a task force uh, that investigated issues of skills and employment uh, in Africa. And the members represented were from education sector, unions, employers, and special interest organizations, all with particular knowledge related to technical and vocational skills in development. The task force was to analyze the specific challenges to, to job creation on the African continent. And among us, the challenges identified were as follows. One, limited access in relevant education, access to relevant education, and scarcity of jobs, especially for women and young people. There was also the mention about challenging working conditions and framework conditions for job creation and vocational training. And then there was also the mention about climate and environmental challenges. And therefore, it became clear that the chance of a formal employment was directly linked to the level of education. And according to ILO, majority of the uneducated workforce is employed in the informal sector. We also know that in Kenya, the informal sector employs the majority of 
the workers. Uh, now, this therefore pointed to the need for a just transition to move the workers to the, to the formal sector with higher job security and decent work conditions. When looking at Kenya also, the building and water sectors are facing a growth in green investments with the potential to create a more sustainable economy. To ensure Kenyan workers' contribution to this transition, their need, this need to upgrade skills to meet new demands, and young people need to be educated and trained in relevant skills. And so you can move to the next slide. Now, based on that analysis, therefore, the assumption behind the project is that increasing quality in technical and vocational education and training can enhance workers' access to decent and formal jobs. These jobs have better, or rather, they, they, these jobs have better job security, working conditions, and income thus contributing to sustainable economic growth, sustainable cities, and infrastructure and social equity. You can do the next slide. Now, the methodology of the project is based on, a good, on good experiences from the VET, Vocational Education Training System in Denmark. In Denmark, the education follows a dual system where the students, after having completed a basic course, spend most of their time working at the company and only coming back to the schools for a few weeks at the time through the education cycle. The cycle lasts anything from two to four years, but with majority being three to four year cycle to earn the certificates. The element of social dialogue, which is a key method in the Danish labor market, is also present in the education system. All labor market partners engage in the system, and we find both unions and employers present in the techni technical training institutions in school boards. This supports successful integration of the students in the labor market after completion of their education. And you can do the next slide. And the project, therefore, uh, was conceptualized and is dubbed Future Proofing Jobs in Kenya's Building and Water Industry. And it has as many as 12 partners from Kenya and Denmark. In Denmark, this includes the earlier mentioned labor market consortium partners, as well as Danish organization working with gender and diversity. In Kenya, the partners include technical training institutes, that's Kerry and Nita. We also have the trade union and employee partners, and partners with specific knowledge on gender equity. The project works to promote, one, a just tra green transition in the construction and water industry. Number two, the decent work agenda. And number three, improved gender balance and equal opportunities in these sector, sectors. Now, through the project, we expect to be able to contribute towards technical education of young people and upskilling of workers, skills enhancing internships in relevant companies, cooperation between unions, technical institutions, and employers, specifically in relation to development of curricula. Activate curricula supporting a green and just transition of the labor market, the establishment of a network of young female workers to attract and support retention of women in the sectors. Uh, you can do the next slide. And as everyone else in the world, this project has had to deal with the consequences of COVID-19. However, despite this, we have managed to build 
partnership across the TTI, unions and employers. And this has led to what we refer to as increased social dialogue, where all partners engage to discuss the most appropriate ways forward. At this point, this has resulted in agreement on a pilot curriculum for subject in carpentry, electrician, industrial attachment, masonry, plumbing and pipe fitting, and water waste management. The curriculum adjustment process was initiated through a skills gap analysis conducted by the project and inviting stakeholders from the industry to give their inputs through consultations. It is based on these inputs. The curriculum has been developed to ensure alignment to the needs among us, the employers. After this agreement, the schools have been able to open for students a registration in the classes. We had hoped and expected that uh, there would be an interest in this. But the number of applications were much higher than we imagined. The approval committee or the selection committee really had their work well cut out for them in selecting the students to be enrolled in the, in, in the program. We only had spots of about 420 students in this first round of students intake but we got over 10,000 applications and hopefully a number of these can be successful in next round of intake, intake in the middle of 2023. And today we are here at Kewi with our two partners who have over 200 students each and at Kewi we know that half of them are women taking classes in these updated subjects. The next step we are looking at, of course, is retaining all these students through the courses and getting good placements, at, including the government, including the government, hopefully, or partly in other institutions throughout the country may be able to replicate from the lessons that are going to be earned from this implementation. We strongly believe that the way to labor market promoting decent work and a just transition is through social dialogue. So with those few remarks, uh, also from 3F, feel most welcome and thank you for your participation. Thank you, Kay, also for hosting this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Maybe to Mpatia Makofi. Thank you so much. Now we are proceeding well. And at this juncture, we have some students who are beneficiaries of this particular program. Maybe they can stand. Wanafunzi. So director and distinct, distinct, distinguished guests. These are some of the beneficiaries that you are seeing at the back. And if you allow, they can greet the proceedings. Maybe two. Two from Nita and two from Kewi. So Kewi, Muneza Jipanga, and Nita. Just Greetings, Musionge Sama. Sasa, please come. Good evening. I'm Linus Wekesa from Bungoma County. I'm from Nita Undertaking Masundi in our building section. I joined Nita in January. In January and it has been a very good benefit let me just say 
thank you for the need for those who the, for the, for the scholarship you have given us from my story it's very long i've worked as a as a soldier let me say from layman's language let me call a watchman for duration of four years and i have undergone, undergone through so many challenges so when i heard from the radio from our scholars from denmark there's a certain tribe in kenya malua Lewis we like listen to radios we like radios so when i listen from the radio from the advertisement i ask my friend is that the scholarship that this is advertising then i applied since i'm a born, a, born again christian i believe in jesus christ and god i got the scholarship and i say thank you very much i feel to be an, a skilled person and a transformed person thank you very much thank you evening everybody i'm called agnes atieno from sia county uh, studying at nita nairobi taking electrical installation so to me i joined nita on january 2023 uh, i heard about the advertisement on the social media on facebook i saw it there but i i never knew that it was that serious so when i applied it was by coincidence that i i got it so um the course that i'm taking is uh, over two terms that one is from january to it's just a bit of, of two terms then from september i hope that i will go for attachment and from the attachment i hope for the best i'm really grateful for the scholarship that i got and i'm looking forward to be a skilled girl that will uh, one day one time change the story uh thank you so much I really appreciate the opportunity that you gave to me and I won't regret it. Thank you so much. Good evening. I'm Zipi Kendeli from Vihiga County. I'm pursuing a course in wastewater management technology. In last year, it was in last year, October, I was just idol just sitting in the house after i have a son who is one and a half year so i was wondering like i have a son in three years time like he'll be going to school where will i get the school fees for this son to be able to get good education through social media whatsapp i was able to get a message from a friend he he told me to apply for this scholarship then in around december i was shortlisted and now i'm here and i thank you all of you. i thank you all i'm representing the mothers group i'm able to say thank you and god bless you for the support you are giving us as mothers and the chance so that we can get knowledge and acquire skills. Thank you. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeremiah Malaba Naskungu. I uh, just want to take this opportunity to thank God uh, for, for the fire he has brought us. Uh, back then in the village, I, I got this information while I was working with a, a local company. And uh, by applying this, course uh, I got I was I managed to get shortlisted and uh, this to the Danish the the one you are sponsoring us uh, it's through your generosity that you have made our dreams come true uh, the skills we are going to acquire from this place uh, we are hoping that they are going to be of, of, of help to the society not only to us but to the society as well and to the future generation uh, I'll not speak so much, but uh, the Danish uh, and all participants in this, 
you've been of great help and uh, we are very proud of this. We can, we are not able to express this by words, but we are, you can gladly see that we are very happy. May you be blessed. Thank you, participants. Now, if you'll allow, there was an instance, and I posted it in social media. We went to Mombasa, and we had been sent by our director to undertake a training. And then I sent to the Danish social media that I've just seen a plumber who is not trained. And she's a volunteer. And they told me, what is the problem? I told him, I don't know the problem. They told, I told them, but she's a volunteer and we have this program. We have already shortlisted. When they saw the photo, they said, please take that student. Mapensi, can you come and say hi? <laughs> I'll also show you the photo, how it looked like then and how she looks like now. <laughs> yes, good evening. You will allow me to speak in Kiswahili. Yes. So bukule nilikuwa nilikuwa muda mrefu kwa field so kizungu ilikuwa sana. Yes. Eh, nilimaliza shule 2018 na baada ya kumaliza nilikuwa totally confused kwa sababu ya shida tofauti tofauti za nyumbani. So kipa upande wa wa fedha nyumbani ilikuwa shida. So nilika kwa one year hiyo 2019. So nikaka nikawa sina namna yoyote ya kufanya kujiende kwa endeleza kozi yoyote. Juu ilikuwa nyumbani hakuna pesa ya kujiendeleza. Kitu ambacho ilikuwa iko nyumbani ni umalize na uolewe. So after there hiyo 2019 yote nilikuwa house girl. So after that nikawa katika ile hali ya kuwa nilikuwa house girl nikafikiria kitu ambayo inaweza nisaidia maisha na nikaona pale kwa kil, na by the way I'm from Kilifi County. Now Kilifi County nikaangalia hakuna msichana yoyote ambaye amejishughulisha na hii kazi ya mikono especially plumbing so nika weka ile pesa kama hao ile ilikuwa nikishughulikia nikifanya kama house girl so nikaweka hiyo nikasema after nimemaliza hiyo mwaka nitaenda nijiunge na niangalie polytechnic yoyote ili niweze ili niweze kujiunga na hiyo polytechnic na niweze kufanya plambi. Nao nilitoka huko nilifanyia voi after that nikarudi Marafa. That is big call Magarini sub county. So nikaenda nikajishughulisha na hiyo kozi huko lakini kwa sababu ya zile shida hiyo pesa ilienda ikaishia katikati na hatimaye nikarudi nyumbani. Na niliporudi nikapata kulikuwa na ile kampuni yetu yenye najita Malindi Mawasko. So nikajishughulisha na ile mafundi walikuwa pale hatimaye nikaona afadhali ni ende ni reje, nifanya registration ya mtihani ambao nilifanya nita niliweza kufanya grade grade 2 grade 3 grade 2 na grade 1 so nikona hizo zote certificates za plumbing and pipe fitting za nita so after that nikakaa sasa nilipomaliza nilifanya the last grade nilifanya last year so nikawa baada ya pale last year mwezi wa ine. so baada ya pale nikaona afadhali niende nijitoe kama volunteer pale mawasko malindi na nikawa pale the whole year last year na baada ya pale nikawa ninaendelea ninaendele, tu kukana hao kama volunteer kama msichana peke yangu inakuwa sometimes inakuwa ngumu lakini kwa sababu hiyo kazi nilikuwa nimeipenda na nilikuwa sijachagulwa na mtu yoyote 
nikaendelea pale mpaka nikazoea ile mazingira so tulipoingia huu mwaka ilikuwa january ilikuwa inaelekea kufika mwisho so nikaona hawa wageni wanaingia kwa ile kampuni na mimi kwa sababu nilikuwa ni kama volunteer ikabidi ni toke ili niwape nafasi hao wageni kwa sababu siko pati ya ile ile kampuni so nikatoka nje nikafuata shughuli zangu lakini baadaye kuna yule kiongozi ambaye anakuwa pale ambaye ni kama leader wao pale kwa ile kampuni akaniita na akaniambia kuna hawa wageni ambao wa, wametoka Nairobi so mimi nikaja nikawasalimia na baadaye wakaniitisha details zangu kama nambari yangu ya simu so mimi nika endelea tu na shughuli zangu lakini on tarehe 23 hiyo mwezi wa kwanza nikapigwa simu nikaambua nataka kama ningekuwa niko wish nikuje nisome zaidi ya pale ambapo ni, niko so nikafurahi sana manake nilitamani baada ya kumaliza ile grade grade one test ile ya uh, nita nikawa nilikuwa natamaniyo sana niweze kuendeleza ile masomo yangu ili manake ilikuwa baada ya hapo nilitamani sana niweze kuajiriwa na niweze kusaidia wale wadogo zangu ambao wako nyuma na nilipopata hiyo simu kwa ninatakana nikuje nisome nilifurahi sana maana nilisema hata Mungu amejibu hayo maombi yangu ju nilikuwa natamani na nilikuwa nilifikiria hata siku moja nikasema ninaweza nataka niende kuna polytechnic nyingine naka huko inajita weru so kwa sababu ya hizo shida sikuweza lakini nilipopata hii simu ya hii scholarship nilifurahi sana nilifurahi sana na hata hiyo siku sikulala jo nilisema for the first time na mimi nitaenda Nairobi jo nilikuwa sikujui so hata saa hii saa hii ndo nika nilipopata hiyo simu nikasafiri nika nikakuja na hatimaye nilipofika niliweza kujiunga na wenzangu na tukaendelea kusoma na naona nikipata vitu tofauti tofauti mbali na zile ambazo nilikuwa niko nazo sasa kile ombi langu tu baada ya kumaliza kumaliza hiko hiko ombi langu ilikuwa ni kupata kazi ili niweze niweze kusaidia hao wadogo zangu so nashukuru sana kwa wakati huu na kule walikuwa wakiniita mwanamke bomba juu ilikuwa ni mimi peke yangu msichana peke yangu na hata baada ya kutoka hapa hiyo hizo skills ambazo napata hapa nadhani nitakuwa nitakuwa msichana bora zaidi baada ya hapo ni hayo tu bwana wabari so thank you you have touched lives and you have seen it yourselves it is not just a program it is indeed something that is touching people's lives it is changing lives and i can assure you if you see the photo we saw then and now there's a difference i don't want to get into a lot of details but i want to invite mr kwaro from kotu i know you have a number of team from kotu to give us your remarks from the employers from the union side and thereafter we'll also have Kabe, kabese to yeah kabese your kabse yes kabse thank you sir thank you so much let me take this chance to thank all the partners that have made this process a success from Koto, I know we have done a lot of work with the Danish trade unions, the Danish government, and the Danish trade unions. They have done a lot of support at Koto level, now at NITA, and now 
here we are. Uh, when I was coming, I, had, I was given a small speech to read, and I think I decided not to read it so that I speak to the occasion. And the occasion I want to speak to is the issue of skill development in this country. Um, as I speak to you, I never saw the inside of a secondary school. During our days at primary school, would be able to finish, and if you don't have uh, something to do in secondary school, you get jobs, and it was easy to get jobs at that time. But thereafter, we developed some kind of thinking that only if you go to secondary school, to high schools, and probably to the university, that's when you matter a lot. So most of us, the parents, and um, indeed the people in government thought that it was the secondary education, the university education, the masters and the PhDs that mattered quite a bit. And they forgot the issue of the skills. And um, it, it has now dawned to our people that there is more need for the skill development as opposed to the other. This is not to say that we don't take education seriously. We also need educated people to do research and do other things. I'm saying this because through my many years of life, we have seen a lot of lack and skills in this country. I'm glad that the lady is talking about the issue of plumbing. Those of you who have done construction work around in this country, you know that we have a lot of shortage of, shortage of uh, skilled plumbers in this country. Even the electricians that we have today, if you give them a job, sometimes they don't do the job they require. So um, I happened to sit in the NITA board, and so we are also trying to see if we can develop skills, and I think there's a gentleman from NITA who may talk more about what we do at NITA, but I think there's need for us to see how we can create jobs through skill development. And the good thing about this country is that we have devolved services from the cities to the 47 countries. And if you walk in all these countries, you will see that there's a lot of things that are coming. There are new projects coming, there are housing projects coming. And the Kenya Kwanzaa, Kenya Kwanzaa government is also continuing with the work that Jubilee did, which talks about the issue of affordable houses. If you look at what is happening in Nairobi today, I'm sure with the housing projects that we see in Nairobi, in Mombasa, in Kisumu, and all of the counties, we need a lot of skilled staff. And unless we train them, we are not going to be able to cope. It is for this reason that I want to thank uh, the organizers of this project. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. From Koto, we believe that from the moment we get more skilled staff, we will therefore be able to get more employers into the market. And of course, as trade unions, we believe in membership. So you get more employers, we'll get more membership, and therefore the trade unions will be able to strive and that will be our success. It is for that reason that we really have to work with you. We want to take skill development close to our heart. We want to work with you. We'll work with all the training universities in this country. When you go back to Denmark, those who came from Denmark, tell them that we are indeed very grateful for what you are doing to this country. We don't take it for granted. We'll keep, you, we'll keep giving you the support that you require. We'll work with you. I was able to, I was supposed to come to Denmark sometimes early this year, last, towards the end of last year, but something happened. Uh, but I was not able to get my passport, uh, the, the visa, sorry. I was not getting a visa, and I think there is, when you go back, tell them that they need to make it a little bit easy to get a visa to Denmark. It should not take six months to get a, a visa application to a country, really. Uh, th that was very frustrating. I really wanted to travel to Denmark, and I didn't, unfortunately. But uh, please, if there's another opportunity, I would like to come and see Denmark so that we see what you do in terms of skill development, so that we are able to share with the Kenyans. I want to also thank the management of Kiwi and everybody else that has taken uh, part in this, making this a success. 
that this is the way we need to go. Let's work together. Let us use the funds that we are given by the donors prudently so that it serves the purpose for which it was intended. When I talk to you Kenyans, you know what I'm talking about. Let us use the funds for the purpose it was intended for and that the niche government and indeed many other sponsors will be able to come and work with us so that we develop this country. I hope those few remarks they have, have made will be able to go into your hearts and see if there is something that you can get out of it that can be useful to us. And uh, may God bless you all and uh, have a good evening. Thank you so much. Uh, we can give you another round of applause. At this juncture, I'm reminded that uh, we're going to have was Pasillo, because I think Capsec is not there. Maybe we can have was Pasillo to give us. The CEO Kerry in absentia, Dr. Letangule, I know you will pass this message when our meeting, tell him we congratulate him on his appointment as a CEO Kerry and welcome him to the water sector. All the partners present who are here from Denmark, uh, and uh, the other eight institutions covering employers, unions, and technical training institutions. Uh, as WASPA, we are delighted to be part of this consortium to ensure that uh, the meditated project outcomes are realized. Maybe for those who don't understand WASPA, and before I proceed, I'm with my colleague here, Eda Wamboy. Eda, you can wave. Thank you. She's in charge of capacity building and giving a lot of support to these programs. We have supervisors from the utilities, WSPs. You can wave. Thank you very much. WASPA is the premium umbrella body of all regulated water utilities in this republic. Uh, according to impact issue number 14, the authoritative water sector report in the country, we have 91 regulated utilities and we are happy to report that 80 of those regulated utilities right from this city, Nairobi City Water and Sewerage Company, Lodwa Water, Garissa, Mombasa, Kisumu, Marsabit, just to mention a few, are members of this association. Uh, we don't directly involve ourselves in provision of water and sanitation, but what we do is we facilitate an enabling environment for our members through capacity building, partnerships, collaborations, so that we ensure that our members are able to prosecute their functions effectively, efficiently, meeting a number of goals at the international level and also with respect to our Constitution 2010 and other development blueprints, including Vision 2030. And we want to acknowledge that uh, human capital development it's very, very important if we are able to realize these objectives. And uh, one of the challenges we are facing in the water sector is the issue of management of human resource. And uh, we have partnered with Kerry in many occasions to ensure that uh, there is a uh, skilling of uh, the people, especially in the lower level CADA, as targeted by this project. So, our participation 
in this project has been key since from skill gap analysis and uh, from the skip gap analysis there were gaps that were identified and this was very instrumental in curriculum review because most of the time you want to ensure that the problems at the utility are addressed by the courses that are offered by the TVET institution. So I think from the curriculum review, we are very confident that the curriculum that is now being uh, given or the students are undertaking is going to address some of the critical challenges within our institutions and uh, they will have requisite yes karibu sana now uh, for us we took a lot of care during the selection process because you know when everybody hears of a scholarship people just get excited and we set a very good selection criteria and this criteria was carefully crafted and we wanted to ensure that if you are in the evening of your ears then uh, you may not contribute a lot to future proving you know when you are approaching your retirement now even your mindset and thinking changes you start thinking of the cows the chicken and the rest you want to find a job so we said we peg it at 50. then we said let's consider kenya certificate of primary education as a minimum interestingly when the applications came even people with the diplomas were there so many so the question i asked if you have a degree in engineering, why do you want a diploma in engineering? So what we did, we had to remove them. So it has not been an easy exercise just to ensure we give opportunity to those who need this upskilling. And we are happy, director, to report and partners that I'm told all the slots that were given have been filled. I think we need to uh, appreciate the employers because I speak on the behalf of employers. Bona to swap my coffee. Because it is not easy. You go to most of the WSPs like Mavoko here and the two students are here, I think three. Their dam is dry, they don't have any water. But despite that, they had to ensure that the students are here. Now, we also want to give you a statement of comfort, especially the students, that uh, already we have committed as employers that you are going to get placements in water. I think that one we have discussed with the senior management. And uh, what we will do even before the course comes to an end let us start identifying companies and where the students will go in advance so that we don't seek it at the last minute so that it's clear that if it is joy what is the name of the lady mapenzi love asa tujue wewe ni mtu wa malindi utaki kusumbuka niambie muambire kuna mapenzi anakuja mtafutie nafasi mambo inakuwa tu rais namna hiyo so that is what we want to do, so that we also match uh, those students, the unskilled who have come getting the skill, so that they get the internship opportunities. Then the supervisors, where are they? So when you are here, please guide them well, and I beseech you that please, if they do well, recommend them for employment. That's very important. Because I remember when I used to be an MD, I didn't know this, but I used to engage only people on attachment from Kewi. That's what I used to do. And again, when it comes to employment, I want the list of people who have volunteered. 
and how will I employ? I'll get the supervisor. Choose the three who are doing best. Then they'll come for the interview. So I have a long history with this institution. So on behalf of the employers within the water sector, we want to guarantee even the partners that arrangements have been met to ensure, apart from the upskilling of those who are from the industry, then we are ready to absorb those who are now undergoing training so that they can get practical knowledge. But again, you have the opportunity to demonstrate that you are competent enough. You are the best man for the job. You are the best woman for the job. I think that is within your purview. So if you do it well, then I believe nobody will hesitate in recommending you. So I believe that that is our contribution and we will pay fidelity to our commitment, even if it means reducing it in writing, which is very, very important, so that there is no that worry. And uh, we continue to ensure that uh, the industry is connected to the training institution or the divet institution. And again, that uh, we are happy that Kewi is able now, we have seen a lot of flexibility, which was not there before. You realize that when it came to review of the curriculum, it took a very long time. So that at times the skills that we wanted and they were not in the institution would make us go elsewhere. But we want to assure you that we are back. And we are very keen because for us to achieve SDG 6, then we must have employees with the right skill sets. If we don't have the right skill sets, it will be a mirage. Thank you very much. Thank you, CEO Anthony. Uh, that was very interesting. Maybe we can give him another applause. Allow me at this juncture to invite the DG of NITA to give us his remarks. Karib, sir. Thank you, moderator. My name is Gerard Kirimi. I'm uh, representing the DG, Nita. I want to make that uh, clarification. I don't want to do impersonation. Eh? Yeah. I want to recognize the CEO, Kerry, the CEO, Waspa, the partners in this room. Of course, we have uh, representatives of uh, the trade unions. I can see our boss, Mr. Benson Okwaro, who sits in uh, NITA's board. Mine will be very brief. First is to pass uh, the, the remarks from uh, DG, who was supposed to be with us today. But due to some commitments he is uh, engaged in, he has sent us to represent him, and we want to hope that will be able to fit into what you were supposed to be doing. With me, I have uh, Madam Millicent Otom, who is a manager within NITA Nairobi. NITA Nairobi is the institution that is uh, spearheading this uh, program. And I think most of you have been able to interact with her in one way or the other. In terms of uh, the project, this project uh, has come at a time whereby the government is implementing the law housing project. It means that uh, whatever is being uh, taught at NITA or the outcome of this uh, project will enable the participants to be absorbed in this uh, kind of a program or project. So what we want to indicate is that uh, as NITA, we want to be at the forefront to ensure that uh, whatever is trained will fit in into what is uh, required in terms of this project. Currently, we're doing training on some areas, including uh, masonry. 
carpentry, tiling, plumbing, painter, decorator, and electrical. As NITA, we are committing to play an active role in the project as a trainer in the building construction sector and produce competent workers and especially for CAPSEC, who are basically our partner, our employer, partner for the project beneficiaries. As NITA, we look forward to be part of the project sustainability and uh, look forward to train more beneficiaries to realize its mission to facilitate quality industrial training for enhanced productivity. Allow me to congratulate the beneficiaries of training. Making up to this level is not a simple feat. Congratulations. And ensure that you carry the tenets of NITA, tenets of KEWI, during the training and post-training. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We can give him another applause. So we are almost there, and uh, I can see we seem to be ready for refreshments and photo session. And I think before then, uh, okay. <laughs> A short discussion. Yes, yes, yes. A few questions would be important, and Madam Nilras, you can moderate that one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, especially to all uh, the the new faces we've seen uh, this afternoon. I think the important part of this. Um, cocktail meeting is hearing your in getting your inputs also to the project that uh, that we have conducted uh, together with the partners for the last uh, few years and maybe also getting your inputs on do you think that the takeouts uh, some of the best practices from the project is something that maybe could be worked on on a higher level in order to maybe make some of the elements a national practice. That is something that we've been very curious about. That is something we have discussed today with the company representatives and the training institutions. It is how can we use the best practices of this project as well and maybe um, upscale it uh, or maybe see if, if is there anything, because as you can see, it's great results so far, so far so good, uh, but is there anything we could take with us? Is there anything with that should be discussed on a higher level? And then I would also just encourage, after the few questions, really encourage everyone to network as much as possible, take your tea and walk around, exchange, uh, visit, uh, exchange your visit cards, um, because it is, uh, it is here we can make an impact. It's it's through the one-to-one -one relations. Um, also, just for you who doesn't, uh, I haven't introduced myself, Nibras Aziz from the Confederation of Danish Industry. So if there's any questions, maybe from the new uh, participants uh, this afternoon, anything you would like to get clarified or or anything maybe you found inspiring um, from from the, the takeouts of the project, we would like to to hear some of your remarks. If there is any, of course. No? Well, then I will leave it to the tea talk uh, instead. I would encourage everyone to get some refreshments, walk around, have great discussions. And of course, if you would like to have uh, more information on the project, we would definitely, I'm sure the team would love to send it to you. But you can just approach us. We will be hanging around. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Neil Ras. So, there were no questions, meaning that we understood everything. So, at this juncture, we can have some tea and snacks at the back there. Then we can network more. 
because this occasion was meant for networking so that we get to know each other more. So Karibuni, welcome. Let's have some tea. And uh, maybe just before we go, I wanted our coordinators just to stand. Madam Masi, director, you might need to no, Madam Masi is the coordinator of this particular project, and she is also supported by Madam Veronica, who is the gender focal person for this project, and they are doing a very wonderful job. We also were joined by our, our principals from campuses. They came all the way. Principals, please just stand and wave. So the principal of Kitui, Mr. Elkana Kaburi, engineer, and the principal of Siakariga, they joined us. Mr. Gitonga, Asanteni. Welcome, let's have some snacks and we continue. Turn up the speaker, speaker. It's DJ Cypher Lee in the mix. The mix. The mix. Turn up the speaker, speaker. It's DJ Cypher Lee in the mix.